I want to share with you a song that I think to me is the best reflection I know of that feeling of, I, I don't... I don't understand, Lord, how you've given me so much. It's a song written by Chris Christopherson. I want to invite you to sing it with me. And then I want to tell you a few more stories of hospitality that come close to the work that Manuel's done. But I hope as you look at the things that we get to be a part of at Ecclesia, that you have the sense that God's shown us a grace just to be participants in this beauty, just to be able to share in it and reflect it. So sing it with me. If you know it, if not, you'll learn it quickly. It's very short. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth love from you? For the kindness you've shown Lord help me Jesus I've wasted it so help me Jesus you know what I am and now that I know that I need it it's so help me Jesus my soul's in you one of the best ways that I can describe to you what it feels like to be a part of Ecclesia and even to lead and be a pastor at Ecclesia is to see opportunities to respond. And every crisis that exists in the world, I believe we have a moment that we can either be a part of it, of the problem, or a part of the solution. And about eight years ago in a similar election cycle to what we're in now, I started to hear rhetoric being declared that felt to me anti-Christian. It was talking specifically about migrants that were coming to our country. And at that time, there was a migrant caravan of about 6,000 people. And what some politicians were saying was that these migrants were rapists, they were criminals, they were here to coming to hurt us and cause us harm. And as I watched it, I thought, There's some, we ought to do something. And I looked at the map at where they were, and my experience told me from the time I spent in Central America that the people coming here were not that. They were actually people coming for freedom and opportunity and to work. They were people bringing their kids, or sometimes even kids coming on their own, hoping for a better life. And so we calculated where they would be, and I called some pastor friends in Mexico City, and we thought they would land in Mexico City in about three days, and we were told that they would land at the Olympic Park. And at that Olympic Park, they would begin to camp, and there would be the one place that the, the city would let these 6,000 people sit. And when I got there, I didn't find people fighting. I didn't find people with gang tattoos. I found kids playing. I found adults reading the Bible and praying together and asking one another for help and caring for each other's kids. And they were everywhere. More prayer, more Bible reading than I've ever seen from any of you. And, and I said, like, we need to be a part of this. And so we gathered a group of business owners that owned food trucks in Mexico City. There was no food there at the camp. And we said, Ecclesia should feed people here. And so we asked seven trucks and we paid for them to come and to make food. And for those days that they were there, we just fed people. We just kept feeding them. We thought if we're gonna feed them, then we ought to get some churros and maybe a mariachi. And it turned into a kingdom of God kind of party, the place that you would wanna be. And we still have friends that we met from that very day. And what we learned is that politicians want to scare you, but that the kingdom of God is an invitation to love all people and see the way that they're made. And I gotta tell you, Ecclesia, this is what I wanna spend the next 25 years doing. So if you believe in it, will you join with me and sing the same? If you feel privileged to be a part of it. Sing it with me. Oh, why me, Lord, what have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth love from you or the kindness you've shown? help me Jesus I've wasted it so help me Jesus you know what I am 
But now that I know that I needed you so, help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hands. Through that visit to Mexico City and the credibility that we earned with some churches and friends there, I was invited back when a group from our church went to Mexico City to preach at our sister church there, Vareda. And I was preaching in my broken Spanish and, uh, and some English with translation, and I was making an invitation. In the midst of the sermon, I must have said something about our love for Venezuelan people. And I said, I don't know what to do. I wish we could help, but we can't find a way to help. But we should pray. And after the sermon, a guy I'd never met before named Diego came up to me. And Diego asked this words. He says, Pastor, I want to know, I got one question. My question is this, are you full of it or not? And I said, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Right? And he said, well, when you were talking about helping Venezuelans, were you full of it? And I said, no, not with that. I, I mean that. And he said, if you mean it, then I want you to meet me next week in Colombia at the Venezuela border, at the Simón Bolívar Bridge, where tens of thousands of Venezuelans are leaving, where people are trying to get access to medical care they can't get in Venezuela, and food and the basics. And he said, it's desperate, the crisis is severe. And if you really mean it, you'll come. And I came with a small team. And part of what we learned is that people needed medical care and they needed funds and resources. We started working with churches, but they also told us that they had, most of them had not eaten meat in months or years. And so we threw a party. We said, let's do 5,000. It turned out to be 7,000 hamburgers. When word got out that there were free hamburgers being offered by our church, the line literally went to Venezuela. Thousands of people lined up. And and we had a party, we had, we had cumbia music, and I got to dance with beautiful abuelas. And, and we got to tell stories of God's grace and goodness. Ecclesia, this is what you do. And still today, as a church, we've partnered with La Frontera and Iglesia to buy a building. We together now own a building at the border where we continue to feed people and care for people, where there's a school. We're not a church that just gathers to make one another feel good. We're here to bring the love of God to everyone. And I believe it's the greatest privilege that we have. Chris Christopherson nails this next verse when he says, Lord, if you've shown it to me, how can I figure out a way to repay it? As you sing it, will you ask God as a prayer, Lord, would you show me how to repay? In this next 25 years, could I be a part of the story in a beautiful way? This is what Sir Christopherson says, and I, I, I want you to sing it and pray it. Try me, Lord, if you think there's a way I could ever repay what I've taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I could show someone else what I've learned myself on my way back to Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus, you know what I am. But now that I know that I needed you, so help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hands. The gift, Ecclesia, is not just what happens at the border of Venezuela and Mexico City. What makes us a church is what you do. I believe our greatest gifts are not our finances or our buildings or our assets. They're the spiritual gifts of our people who serve. And all over the church, we have people like our beloved sister Aubrey Long, who leads us in worship, and she's the chaplain for her water polo team. And she lovingly, faithfully serves those teammates, like our brother Charles Ivey, who leads as a middle school leader and serves beautifully, like our brother and sister Luis and Maggie Huertas, who lead at the Lindale community. They mentor people, they give financial advice, they lead ESL classes, they love people with their whole hearts, like our sister Jane Fang, who will teach Tai Chi or serve in the women's ministry. She's a physician, but she brings a humility to the way that she cares for and loves and serves in hospitality. Like our brother Jason Baker, who is beloved in our student ministry. He's beloved. And he's, he's not beloved for his wicked wit, though he has a wicked wit. He's beloved because the kids know that he actually loves them. 
like our sister Lucy Guadri, who Lucy is a gift, right? And Lucy at Lindale, she pulls people together. She's a connector. She brings a presence of love to that building. She loves to be at the Astros hosting people, like our brother Michael Carpenter, who leads in the middle school, who brings a smile and, and a sense of Jesus' spirit everywhere he goes, like our sister Misty Flores, who gathers the Be Still community, right? And Misty holds a space of contemplation and beauty that nurtures people and allows them to grow. Like our brother Nevin George, who's a faithful small group leader. He's led his community, his small group, through tragedy, the loss of a dear brother, and done it faithfully when it wasn't easy, it was hard. Like our sister Caroline McGill, who serves so faithfully in children's ministry, who demonstrates the love of Christ to those kids with her constant presence and her joy like our brother David Ramos, who cooks for people so beautifully. When, when Dave makes food for you, you have this sense that God must be real, right? He puts combinate balsamic with feta on watermelon and you just go, that's beautiful. Like our brother Lakeith, who does everything that needs to be done around here. Lakeith is like a mascot for our kids. Our kids love Lakeith. They love him because of his enthusiasm for them and for the Lord and for the things that we get to do together. Like our brother and sister Ruth and Steve Turley, who lead in beautiful ways. They, they lead the most long-standing small group at Ecclesia. They open their home week after week. And Steve leads the Truett Seminary now here in Houston. And, and has a heart to serve especially the Latino community. And Ruth leads an institute at Rice that informs so much of what we need to know about how we serve the city and does it with a heart for mission and passion. Like our brother and sister and sister Vivian and Clay Thomas. They, they serve our young adult community with a heart and a passion for who Ecclesia is and what we do. Ecclesia, hear this. I could go on and on and include so many more of you, but you need to know this. If we have a bright future if all of us could be a part of that story. And we're gonna be gathering. We're gonna be gathering over the coming weeks to ask that question. What does it look like to be part of that story? We've gathered a, one specific meeting at our next version of the Open Door Gathering. It's gonna happen at both campuses. And our main question to you is, what are your gifts? What do you hold in your hand? And how can you bring something that will illuminate a new story? I wanna ask you to be there, even if you've done Open Door before. It's gonna be a different format, some different ideas. But I'm hopeful for the next 25 years because of you, because of what God's done. So will you stand with me and we're gonna sing this chorus together as we come to communion and ask God to guide us on this path. Lord, <clears throat> Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus, you know what I am. And now that I know that I needed you, so help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hands. Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus, you know what I am. And now that I know that I needed you, so help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hands. Help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hands.